In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create automated tasks in Salesforce. I go over how to set up the trigger, how to set up the action, and how to use it in the active system. Welcome to the channel, my name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully, it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help at all setting up Salesforce for your business, check out my website below. We would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Like I just mentioned, in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create automated tasks inside of Salesforce. Now in this particular instance, I wanna create an automated task based on a stage on opportunities. So I'm gonna head over to my opportunities area and just click onto a dummy opportunity that I have within this system. And as you can see here, we've got a few different stages. And what I wanna do is create an automation that when the stage is equal to example stage inside of Salesforce, a task will be created automatically, assigned to myself, related to this particular opportunity to do something for this opportunity, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. This is gonna be super, super simple and I'll walk you through every single step of the way. If you have any questions, just drop a comment below. Um, bear in mind this can be done for any area of the Salesforce system, but I'm just using opportunities as an example. So in order to do this, what we need to do is go to the cog in the top right hand corner and go to the setup page. Now the quickest area, the quickest way to get to the area we need to get to is just go to the quick find up the top left hand corner and just type in flow and then we want to go to the process automation and go to flows, okay? Go ahead and click on flows and what we want to do is create a new flow up the top right hand corner. So if you go ahead and press new flow we will be presented with this screen here. The first thing we need to decide on is what is actually happening within this flow. So we've got a few different options, screen flow, schedule triggered flow, auto launched flow, record triggered flow and platform event. In this particular instance, we wanna use the record triggered flow. I'm not gonna go into detail on any of these in this video, otherwise this video will be far too long. So we wanna select the record triggered flow, so that is when something happens within a record, trigger a flow. Let's so go ahead and press the create button. And now we need to define our trigger. Now in this particular instance, we were using the opportunities object. So go ahead and select on object and just search opportunity. If it is a different, um, different object for you, then go ahead and search for that particular object. So now we've got the object defined, we need to configure the trigger. So trigger when the trigger the flow when, and we've got a record is created, a record is updated, a record is created or updated, or a record is deleted. Now in this particular instance, I'm actually gonna select a record is created or updated. And the reason being is because when you create an opportunity record, you can actually select an alternative stage to the uh, default stage. So I wouldn't want someone to, let's say they've forgotten, create, forgotten to create an opportunity and they go ahead and jump straight to the example stage. I wouldn't want them to miss all of the tasks that they would need to do, okay? Now we need to select the set entry conditions. Now in this particular instance, we have one condition and that being that the stage is equal to example stage. But if you use the drop down menu here, we've got a few different options. All conditions are met, so that would be an and basis. Any condition is met or, we've got a custom condition logic is met, so that would be an and or basis, so two ands and an or. <laughs> and then we've got a formula evaluates to true. Now, I'm not gonna go into any of these apart from the all conditions are met and that being the and one. And then what we need to do is search for the field and that field being the stage field. So stage name is equal to, and then enter the value being example stage. And then if you wanted to add additional conditions, you can do, and I believe you can edit the formula from any of the condition requirements to be an and or basis. So it's super, super simple, especially if you're familiar with those. And then we need to select when to run the flow. So is this going to be every single time a record is equal to example stage or only once? Now you have got the choice between the two options here. So let's say you jump ahead or you go ahead and then the opportunity actually ends up going back to the, to the example stage. Will it recreate all of those tasks again? And that's where you need to decide between these two. Now we can also select what we are optimizing the flow for, fast field updates or actions and related records. Given that we are created, creating a new related record, we wanna optimize for related records, but if you're, updating a rec if you're updating the opportunity record with some additional data when something happens, then you would want to optimize for fast field updates. So once you're happy, go ahead and press the done button and congratulations, we've now created the trigger. 
All we need to do now is create the action. So if we go to the plus button just below the play button, uh, go ahead and press that. And this is where we can add the different elements. We've got a number of different options here. Again, I'm not going to go into these in much detail, but we wanna scroll down to data and go to create records as this is where we're going to create a task record based on the examples, based on the stage being equal to example stage. So go to create records, and then we wanna just give this a name. So I'm gonna call this create example task and that will automatically enter in the api name as well then we need to select how many records to create one or multiple in this instance it's just the one task if it was multiple you can go ahead and select that and then we need to define how to set the record fields so use all values from a record or use separate resources and literal values in this particular instance as we are creating a related record or I suppose a separate resource, we need to go ahead and select the separate resource option. And then we need to search the object that we are creating a record for. And in this particular instance, it is task. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search task. If you're creating a contact opportunity, you would search contact. If you're creating an account opportunity, you would search account. But this is task, so I'm creating a new task uh, record when that criteria is met. And then what we need to do is map the field values between the task on the left hand side and the opportunity on the right hand side. So if you actually click into the fields, you'll see all of the fields on the task uh, on the task record. Another way of visualizing this is if we head back to the front end of the system and go to new task on the right hand side here, you'll see all of these different fields. These are the fields that we're going to be mapping. So what I wanna say is the person that created the opportunity is going to be responsible for the task, etc., etc. So we're mapping and connecting this information. So if we head back to the flow builder and we can go ahead and begin to map the information. Now, the most important piece of information that we have to connect in order to create a task record is the owner ID. Now the owner ID, sorry, if we head back to the front end, you can see has an asterisk. That means it's, it is business required. So in order to create a new task, we have to enter in this information. So if I go to owner ID and I want to select the owner of this task is going to be the person that created the opportunity record. So what I want to do is go to global variables, go to record and then to opportunity, just select on that and then search owner. And then just as you can see, we want to select the owner ID with the letter symbol on the left hand side. So we've now mapped the owner of the opportunity to the owner of the task. That's the first thing. And then we can go ahead and continue to map additional fields. So a few things that I would recommend is what ID. So that is what is this particular task related to. So in this instance, we wanna of course relate it to the opportunity. So again, go to record opportunity and then just search opportunity. And then you should see opportunity ID. And that will connect this task with the opportunity that it's being created from. Again, go to add field, go to search fields, scroll to the bottom and we wanna connect the who ID. So who is this particular task associated with? Now, in this instance, we want to use the contact that is associated with this particular opportunity. So again, go to record and then go to, I would just search contact and you, again, you just select the contact ID. So we're filling in the basic information and we are connecting the dots. If we go to add field again, what we want to do is search and we can go ahead and assign different information. So in this particular instance, maybe I want to set the priority of this particular task as being high. So I've selected the priority field from the task and then go ahead and as you can see, you've got three values from the pick list. In this instance, I want to have it as high. So go ahead and just press high. Super, super simple. Go ahead and add field again. And let's say we want to uh, write out the subject. So this is going to be the name of the task. And I'm just literally going to write, please complete this example task exclamation mark and that will write out as the subject and the subject of this task will be please complete this example task you're probably going to want to make it more specific for your actual live system but given this is an example i'm just writing that for the sake of this video so one one additional thing i want to show you is creating the due date so what we can do is go to add field and then go to due date and go to activity date or due date for this particular task. And what I actually wanna do is set the due date for being 10 days after the partic this particular record is created. So what you need to do is go to the value button here, go to new resource and go ahead and select the resource type, use the drop down menu and go to formula. And we are essentially writing a formula to say in 
So 10 days after this particular record is created, then set the due date. So give the API a name. So days after 10 task. I don't know. I've just made it up. <laughs> Complete example. And then select the data type. Now we've got two options. You can just select the date. So that'd be 10 days time. So by date, if you select the date and time, it would be 10 days as in date and the exact time 10 days later. So it depends how much detail you want to track. I'm going to just go for the date and time just to cover everything. And what we need to do is literally just type in now capital letters, open bracket, close bracket, space, and then just type 10. So I'm saying 10 days after now, which is when the record will be created. And once you're happy, just press the done button. And I have essentially mapped all of the fields now. I've mapped all of the related information. I've set the priority and the subject. You can add a description if you'd like to, the same principle as the subject. And I've set the activity date or the due date being 10 days after the task is created. So you can go ahead and watch this video and replicate everything that I've done. Once you're happy, just press the done button. So once you're happy, just go to the save button in the top right hand corner and save your flow. Um, I've, saw, I've already saved mine. If you're saving this for the first time, you're going to get a pop up window. Just give it a name and then just press the save button. So what we then want to do is go ahead and debug our flow. So if you go ahead and press debug up the top right hand corner, leave everything but change the run flow as if the record is and then select updated and then just search for an opportunity. So in this instance, I'm going to search for CRM crew and then I'm just going to change the stage from qualification to in, to our example stage. So essentially I'm updating that particular record just in the debug flow and it's not going to change in the front end of the system. It's just a test that it works. So if I then go ahead and press the run button, we can now see that this would work. The debug has been checked. Nothing uh, no issues have occurred and as you can see a new record has been created and now you've created your flow and you've tested it to make sure everything is working all we need to do now is just activate the flow so if you go to activate up the top right hand corner here and go ahead and press the activate button that means our flow is now live so if we head back to the front end of the system just go ahead and press the refresh button and all we need to do now is move our stage from qualification to example stage and press mark as current stage and as you can see, a new task has been created. If we go ahead and press and click onto this task that we've just created, you can see the subject is please complete this example task. It is associated with Nick Boardman, the contact. It is related to CRM crew, the opportunity. And we've got the due date, which is in 10 additional days time. Um, and we've got the priority high and anything else that we did decide to change, such as the description, will have been updated as well. And when you head back to the opportunities area, you will see that that is now live. Now, just in case you want to deactivate it and change anything, just head back to the flow area, press deactivate, and then you can update and change your flow as you wish. Hopefully this video was helpful and I will see you in a moment's time. Hopefully you now have your automated tasks set up in Salesforce. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you've got any additional questions at all, you're more than welcome to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.